Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply. This video is to bring you a closer look at the Stanley. This is their part number FBB191, 5x5, US3 is what it is. So this is a, uh, a hinge, and we're going to dissect the part number so we can understand completely what this hinge uh, is. The short version is that it is a 5x5 hinge made of solid brass and a polished brass finish. That's the short version, okay? You can always tell an actual solid brass piece of hardware because its sheen is a bit, um, well, it's distinct, and it is um, far more elegant and natural looking. Solid brass or solid bronze products has have a warmth to them that really can't be mimicked by plating over steel. You could do this hinge in steel from Stanley. It would become an FBB 179. Um, that would be a steel-based hinge, but when, you've, when you're looking for solid brass, it'd be a 191. Okay, I'm, I'm always uh, a fan uh, of Stanley hinges uh, when I see them because they are such... Um, I believe that they're manufactured very well, and that's because the fit and finish is always very impressive and the operation is always very smooth. Those hinge leaves are already very smooth, operating very well, and, uh, and will give the impression when you take them out of the box of a quality product. So let's dissect the part number. In no particular order, the FBB191 is it's a number of things. It is a, uh, a full mortise hinge. What I mean by that is when we look at the swag on the hinge leaf here and here that's meant to be mortised flush to the edge of the door and frame when the leaves are brought parallel it means it's a five knuckle hinge you can see why we would call it a five knuckle hinge it also means that it is a um, ball bearing hinge as well and because it is another facet standard weight it has two bearing packets here and here standard weight on this hinge i believe will be 140 thousandths My caliper tells me 0.142. Okay. So that's a standard weight. If it was a heavyweight hinge, that leaf thickness would be 190 thousandths. Um, and that's what that FBB191 means. Well, it also means that it's non-ferrous base material. Uh, in this case, it would be made of brass. So if you said FBB191, it means non-ferrous brass, bronze, or stainless steel, then the finish dictates the base material. This is polished brass, so therefore it's a brass-based material. It's been highly polished with a lacquer applied to it. Okay. Now, um, let's take a look at the size. This is a 5x5 hinge. That means it's 5 inch tall and 5 inch wide. Okay. The height is the first dimension on hinges, and that's always how it uh, runs when it comes to hinges like this. Uh, and why is that important? Well, it's important so that you understand that the height is the first dimension. This is a five by five, so you know we really don't necessarily, we're not gonna be penalized uh, with some sort of problem if we don't understand which dimension comes first. But if you're dealing with a five by eight or a four and a half by four, uh, hinges that are rectangular are not square. It's important to know the height is the first dimension. The height's the first dimension, I think, because it's the more important of the two in the sense of the order in which you convey the information. It, it, it would be nice to, you know, know, obviously knowing the width is, is as important, um, but the height is more of a telltale sign as to some other factors, perhaps how heavy the door is, how wide the door is, how much use the door will get. If you tell me it's a, a five inch tall hinge, I start thinking in a, you know, immediately a series of possibilities. It's an inch and three quarter thick door, it could be two inch, could be two and a quarter inch. It might be a standard door thickness, but a higher, a heavier volume because it's taller. And then when you tell me the width, those other pieces fall into place. Um, and we don't think about the width first and then the height piece is falling into place. And I think that's why doors are width first because it's just, you know, I need a door. Okay, what size? Well, seven foot. Okay, great, that's the height. The width is really what I want to know first because that will tell me a lot more. And then the height will bring the other pieces into place. Uh, screws are included. Um, now, I don't know if these are brass. They are definitely non-ferrous.
I'm going to say that these screws are brass. They're uh, imperceptibly non-ferrous. If they were stainless, they might have a small twinge of magnetism to them. So the point of putting that magnet on there is to tell us, be mindful. This is a hinge that is a non-ferrous base material. We can't determine absolutely that it's stainless with a plating over it, which I don't believe it is at all. I don't think I've ever seen a, a plated stainless steel product. Um, the point of that is brass is a softer metal than steel. So when you're pre-drilling those holes, be sure to drill them the proper size. A general rule of thumb is that if you're going into a softwood uh, product, you can be about maybe 80% of the root diameter of the screw for your pre-drill pre -drill size. And if it is a hardwood, you'd be about 85%. General rule, um, I generally uh, find that the drilling of the root size of the screw itself is sufficient but you can tighten that up a little bit when you're going into certainly a softwood. And the and there are guidelines that state hardwood as well. Um, I would suggest that you use a drill size drill bit, not a fractional size, because the increments between uh, different sizes in a drill sized set of drill bits are much finer. Um, I had a client asked me to define a drill size drill bit set and there were between 7 64ths and an eighth of an inch, there were five increments of size options between just a 64th of an inch. So you can get a lot finer interval when you're drilling material. I'd put a caliper on that wood screw and then I would determine my size. And then I would test a very good, very proper fitting bit would be necessary so that you don't strip or, or shear that screw. Machine screws are also included and this clearly comes with all machine and all wood screws. Um, I don't know if it's standard for Stanley to supply that. I imagine that it is because that's what we have here. By all means, indicate in the comment field at the time of order what screws you want. There is no reason to get the incorrect screws. They very likely, for a, a, a hinge like this, you could very much arguably say that it's most likely going to be a wood door and a wood frame. You sure could. Why would you use a five inch wide hinge on a uh, inch and three quarter thick door um, that is steel? That would be unusual in a five inch size. Um, what if they were to send all machine screws and half wood screws and now you don't have half of all the wood screws that you require because that's the manufacturer's standard? Um, define it at the time of order and we'll tr convey that information to the manufacturer so that they understand what you want. Let's switch to the screen view where we can take a closer look at some supporting documentation. So this is the item that we're looking at and one thing I want to call to your attention, I earlier said that it's 140 thousandths, it's not. It's 146 thousandths is the leaf thickness. So back to the top, this is the hinge we're looking at. Medium weight doors of average frequency, that would be true. It's a standard weight hinge. So, you know, standard applications. All hinges have template screw hole location for use on either wood or hollow metal doors and frames. Five by five standard weight, brass base, five knuckle, stainless steel pin, two permanently lubricated non-detachable ball bearings, 146 thousandths removable pin, US3 polished brass. They could also call that 605. US3 means it's polished brass, but it doesn't tell you the base material. The BHMA code 605 tells us it's not only solid, it's polished brass, but it's on a brass base material. <clears throat> Let's go through these supporting documents here. Okay, so we have tech drawing, and that's going to serve as um, not only information on the gauge but also the swag line dimension. Five by five hinge is two and a sixteenth for the F dimension, which is the edge of the hinge leaf to where that bend starts. Some people want to know that dimension, and there it is. Location for the holes. So when they said earlier template location, template screw hole location, the term template is used in a couple of different ways. It's meant to, you know, refer to a item that would be uh, described as a technical drawing. Here's the template. This is a, a technical drawing of the product showing you the important dimensional properties of the item. That's template. However, 
when we use the word template, it's meant to describe if this hinge is to the template pattern, these dimensions that are here, regardless of it being Stanley or Bomber or McKinney or Hager, uh, Ives, etc., if they make five inch tall hinges to a template pattern, they will always match this. So you can, you know, if, you're, if your frame and your door is prepped to the template pattern, any of the manufacturers will fit because it's made to the template pattern. And that's where we um, get that from. So if you're not sure if this will fit your existing, by all means, check these dimensions. It's been a standard for several decades. Other hinges uh, are listed here. Steel-based hinges, heavyweight hinges, concealed bearing hinges, um, hinges that are used in very high application, heavy doors with institutional sort of preparations done to them, 190 thousandths on some of these other hinges, of a heavyweight hinge. So the same hinge, the FBB191, in that heavyweight would be an FBB199. Its steel counterpart is in this column, and those part number changes, so it would be a FBB 179, as I had said earlier. Okay, very handy. Now there's a link here to the manufacturer's page, and that document is, or pardon me, that link is handy because it will not only allow you to review all of the Stanley products that we sell, but also to the manufacturer's website, as well as other catalogs and encyclopedic documents. The one catalog that I like the most is the 2010 Architectural Hardware Catalog. It's an older version of the catalog. It has everything in it that I need. Not much, if anything, has changed that I'm aware of. And it has everything where I need it. It has everything I need and where exactly I know to find it. I'm used to using this catalog is what I'm driving at. So the beginning of every good hinge manufacturer's catalog will start with basically a, a, an intro to hinge section, an encyclopedia general hinge information well here it is you want to learn about hinges this is what you need to read and if you are in the hardware industry if you're in the door you know commercial hardware industry having a working knowledge of the different terms and how they're used is of course mandatory full mortise half surface full surface swing clear um, half surface well full surface swing clear that would be a half mortise swing clear all unusual type of hinges but you still need to know um, about them. This chart is handy. I refer to it. It's a. It's basically a chart that says, how heavy is your door? Here's the hinge we want you to use. So I had a client ask me the other day about a door that was pushing 600 pounds. So when we look into what Stanley has tested, um, you know, 300 to 600 pounds, frequency of use, here's the hinge they want you to use. Now what's very interesting is, and here's a statistic or a, a fact, 70% of the weight of the door is hung by the top hinge. Now, low, medium, high, five, six, eight inch tall. You'll see how the height of the hinge changes as the frequency goes up. And that's because the height of the hinge is substantially more capable of carrying the weight of the, of the door and its use. Um, and the width is, the wider the hinge, it works actually against you because you want that vertical axis of pivoting to be as close to the face of the door as possible. However, I don't think you're going to get an 8x5 is why that's a 6 inch there. They probably don't make an 8x5 is what I'm driving at. Um, they might, but they probably don't. Uh, okay, so a weight chart. Some other important information about hinges. The formula to determine the width of your hinge that you require is here. I refer to this all so I refer to this so often with clients. I have the formula measured uh, memorized but I'm able to uh, refer clients to this diagram and then we talk about it together to determine how wide a hinge needs to be. Door weights, screw options, handing chart, um, etc. So let's search our document for FBB 191 and get to the cut sheet page. It's a very common part number, so take a bit of clicking through here. Here we go. FBB 191. Here's our cut sheet. Okay. This is handy because it will give you an overview 
of not only the base op the base features of the hinge, but some options such as a raised barrel or power transfer or hospital tips, decorative tips, and then security features, which are defined in the catalog as well. There are no security features on this hinge. It's obviously an interior door or more likely an exterior door that swings in. Here's the size chart of what's available from three and a half by three up to six by six. And because it's standard weight, you'll only see those standard weight. Now we had said CB168 in that hinge chart. If you recall us looking at that eight by, um, pardon me, six by five, six by six and eight by six. Let's see if they make that heavyweight hinge in the CB1, uh, yeah, CB168. I wanted to see if they make a eight by five and that would be on their hinge chart. Yeah, they, they don't. So in the CB168 cut sheet, they, uh, there is no 8x5. So that's why they went from 6x5, six, 6x6 six five, six by six to 8x8, eight eight, or whatever it was. 6x5, 8x6, 8x8. That's one heck of a hinge. An 8 inch by 8 inch is a very large hinge. But you run into them. Uh, you, you certainly do. Uh, about maybe nine months ago, a client ordered you know, a, an entire case of them in oil rub bronze finish. Okay. Now, the rest of the catalog is really important because there's a there's quite a lot of variety when it comes to just a standard hinge, whether it be exposed bearing or concealed bearing and different features and aspects um, of how a hinge will be uh, manufactured to be best suited to an application. Obviously, three knuckle hinges. We're dealing with a five knuckle hinge. You can do a two knuckle hinge as well. So this catalog is, is quite irreplaceable when it comes to simply learning more about, um, about the world of hinges. Let's wrap up this video on camera. Now the Stanley hinge has been a very high quality hinge for, uh, I'm gonna guess 170 years. I don't know when Stanley started making hinges. Um, this hinge is My understanding, this hinge is manufactured in Asia and specifically China. It does not say that on the box, but it's my understanding that's where it's manufactured. Um, that being, setting that aside, I'm a very, um, I'm, 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 I'm partial to Stanley. And it's not because I do a lot of Stanley business, because we really don't in the realm of of just selling one manufacturer's hinges. You know, we sell hinges from all manufacturers and they all have their strong suits and their strong points. But one thing to be sure about Stanley is that their fit and finish is always very good and the hinges always work very smoothly, okay? And I think it's because early in my career that catalog, that intro section is, you know, I probably, I've referred to it countless times and probably read it several times to gain my understanding. Very nice quality hinge. I would not suggest, pardon me, I would not hesitate to suggest that you consider Stanley as an option for your hinges. The name is obviously ubiquitous with many things, but they, people will certainly know it for, for hinges as well. One nice thing that Stanley does, even though they're not the only company that does it, is they will include some shims, some cardboard perforated shims. If you need to take your door and move it out, tip it down, kick it up, change the cant of the door, how it sits within the door uh, rabbit or pocket itself. They include that uh, in there. They're <clears throat> priced and sold per hinge. This hinge happens to come three in a box. If it was a different hinge, it could come in a different multiple inside the box. So in order to dispel confusion um, about how they're priced and sold, they're just each. You know, if you have an eight foot door and you want four hinges, you're not relegated to buy three or six, you can buy just four. If you have any questions on the Stanley FBB191 and a five by five US3 or any other Stanley product, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you.